Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All right, this is your moment, your big break, your chance to show everyone that you are the best. Don't mess it up. You're the best. You know you're the best. Just be the best. Be you, be yourself. Don't get nervous. Come on, I can't get nervous right now. Please. What if I told you to cure the situations like this? was a lot more simple than you might think. Anxiety, nervousness, these are things we've all dealt with in our lives. And, nah, hold on. This is the off day series. I'll keep the glasses. Still a lot more formal than what y'all are used to if you follow the series, but for the sake of the intro, we'll leave it like this. But like I was saying, we've all dealt with anxiety and nervousness in our lives. Whether it was in a, whether it was in, whether it was in a, an, an elementary, whether it was in an elementary school spelling bee or just doing a school project, I know in some way, form or fashion, you felt your stomach turning over and feeling that big moment with the fate of the world seeming to be on the line. And I know I promised a cure to it. And I know that sounds impossible if you've really been in a situation like that. But the things I've had to deal with in my life and stuff I've noticed recently has shown me that beating nervousness and beating anxiety can really be simple. For those of you who don't know, one of the things that I do for a living is something that's kind of high pressure. You could say the stakes are high and we're faced with anxiety and nervousness on a day-to-day -day basis. I consciously don't mention it a lot because this is called the off day series, but I figured a little bit of context would be helpful. Personally having to face that knot in my stomach the butterflies before a big moment over and over again has led me to find ways not to suppress it, but to embrace it and actually silence it all together when the big moment comes. Now notice I didn't say silence it all together forever because anxiety or rather nervousness or fear about a situation can actually help you. And you might've heard this somewhere before, but maybe you haven't heard it explained like this. You see, we all know when a big moment is coming. We all have it marked on our internal calendars and in our minds and we anticipate its arrival. Think back to your time in elementary school when you knew all the dates of the field trips by heart. That same thing is going on in your brain with all of the big key moments coming up in your life. Whether it be a big performance, a big essay due, or a big job interview to get a promotion or a raise. These things live in our subconscious mind and it sends fear or nervousness as a signal for you to prepare. If you go back to the intro and listen to the thoughts that were going through my, I guess it's my head, my character's head, whatever you want to call it, I'm sure you can relate. The only problem with having those thoughts is having them or addressing them for the first time when the big moment comes. If you're addressing those thoughts for the first time, moments before your moment comes, it's already too late. Then you have to rely on factors like luck or chance to hopefully get you through. Think back to that pair of lucky socks or lucky whatever that you used to rely on. Now I'm not saying it's not okay to have things to calm your nerves like lucky items, but if you're getting to the point to where you need to rely on luck every single time a big moment comes, the problem isn't how much or how little luck you have, it's in how you're preparing for that big moment. Like I mentioned earlier, your mind has an internal calendar of all of your big upcoming events. So take a second, take out some time each week and map out your next month or the next weeks with all of your big moments to come and take small steps each day to prepare for those. Think about what's separating you now from the person that's cool and calm when the stakes are the highest. What are the little things that you can do now that will calm those nerves when the big moment arrives? The world always tells us the person who wants it the most is going to win in the end. But I think that's only half true. Picture two runners, both at the starting line, facing off in the final race of the biggest championships in the world. Runner A wants to win more than anything. Runner A hypes himself up or herself up and tries to convince herself or himself in the moment that they're the best, that they can do it, that they're good enough, that this is their moment, that this is their big break. Then take runner B. Runner B is calm. All the jitters have faded. All the butterflies have gone because their desire to win didn't start when they lined up on the starting line. It started months ago when they decided to go for the championship. That desire, that wanting is what drove them to train early in the morning, is what drove them to map out their blueprint 
blueprint to becoming a champion. It's what gave them the discipline to stay true to that blueprint and line up at the championships, not with the desire, but with the knowing that they will win. So who would you rather be, runner A or runner B? I think the answer is pretty clear. I'll leave you with this. As you start to overcome anxiety and nervousness, you're going to find yourself reaching for and shooting for higher and higher goals. And as you achieve those goals by honing in on your preparation, is going to put you in places that you're going to be afraid to fall from. As you climb mountains, you're going to get higher. That's the nature of success. But don't allow your fear of falling to keep you from doing the things necessary to continue climbing. If you go for something and fail or get rejected, even though it seems like you might have taken a step back, nothing has changed. You're still someone who's in the process of getting or achieving that thing. So when you fail, look back at the process you are using to prepare for your big moment. Moments, refine that and keep shooting for the stars. I'll see you guys soon.